In this video we're going to look at serial to parallel converters. In particular we're going to concentrate on the 74HC164 and the 74HC595. To implement this circuit we're going to use, uh, we're going to create a sequence of LED lights and we're going to use the Arduino uh, to provide the data to, to, to drive the sequence. And in this case we're using the 74HC164. Uh, this circuit takes four lines, uh, at the moment this circuit takes four lines from the Arduino. It takes a red VCC, it's just for power. The blue line is our ground line. And they, th those two lines are used to both power the ICs and the LEDs. We also have an orange line and a green line that we're taking from pins 8 and 9 of the Arduino and connect them to, to, to our, our port. The orange line is our data line, it's connected from pin 8 on the Arduino to the pin 1 of the 74HC164 and the clock line is being connected from line 9 to the pin 8 of the 74HC164 so that's the green line. So that's the, the basic configuration of, of our board. The idea with this is that the data is only sent across the orange line, that we're, we're only using one line in effect for for data and that the 74HC164 is then providing us with eight outputs that we're using to drive these eight LEDs. These eight LEDs are in common cathode configuration and we have to be slightly careful about the way that we drive these LEDs because there's a maximum current allowed through this IC of about 20 milliamps. So in this case here I'm being careful just to ensure that I'm meeting the specifications. So here's the data sheet. Uh, you can see there's MM 74HC164, it's high speed CMOS, and it's an 8 bit serial in parallel out shift register. So the 8 bits are the, uh, is the, describes the serial data and also the fact that we have 8 lines on our output. So here you can see the connection diagram and the logic diagram. You'll notice with the connection diagram that it's a, it's a 14 pin IC. We have two inputs, A and B, and we have 8 outputs. Uh, Q, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H. We have a clear line, a clock line, and a ground. There's also certain, and I spoke about this, there's certain constraints that we have to meet, such as the 20 milliamp maximum, or in this case it's 25 milliamps maximum uh, throughput current. So we just have to be careful that we meet the, meet the specifications of this IC. So looking at the logic diagram, we can see there's a couple of, of, of issues we have to be careful of. One is to note that there's an NAND gate on the inputs A and B and we'll come back to that shortly. We also have a clear line and you can see here that the clear line uh, if you look at the uh, the truth table you'll see that if the clear line is low that everything is set to low. So we'll look at how we design our circuit in a minute but the other thing we have to do is write a bit of code and we're going to use um, the programming environment that's with the uh, Arduino and this is the code that I've written here for the 74HC164. So you can see here it's eight LEDs and we're going to light them for one second on each pass. So the first thing we need to do is to set up our two constants. We've got our clock pin and our data pin. So our clock pin is pin 9 and our data pin is pin 8. So the orange line is pin 8 and the green line is, uh, is the clock line, pin 9. The first thing we do uh, is to call our setup function, which, well, it's going to be called for us, but it happens only once. We've got to set the, the pin mode of both of these um, lines to be output so that therefore they're going to be output pins. Then we have our loop our loop function which is going to uh, iterate as fast as possible. Uh, it's going to, in this case we've got the first for loop is for i is 0, i is less than 8 so it's doing 8 iterations and we're going to shift out this value out to our pins to get this sequence across. So the way that we do this is we shift we choose our data pin, our clock pin we're saying that we're sending the most significant birth first and we're using our binary uh, seven zeros and then a one and we're going to shift this left by i times. So the first time the loop iterates i is zero so we shift it left zero times so it stays exactly as it is then it shifts left one time so we get the number two appearing so it goes one two four eight sixteen and so on. Meanwhile we delay 125 milliseconds at each loop so this means that in total it takes one second. Eight times 125 gives us one second to go across. As well as that, we have a similarly we have our, our the second for loop, which then describes um, which then describes the pins going the opposite way. So you'll see that we use a right shift in that case instead of a left shift. Uh, we can compile it and check that it works, and then when we're ready, we press the upload button and upload it to our um, to our Arduino. 
So once the code is uploaded, you can see here we've zoomed in on the IC and you can see the, the, the LEDs flat, the LED moving back and forward. And you can also see, if you, if you look very carefully, you can see a slight flashing of the rest of the LEDs. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. So here you see the, 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 um, the IC itself. You can see that we have the pins connected. Pin 1 uh, is our data pin, it's the orange line. And you can see that it's connected to pins A and B. I'll talk about that in a minute. You can see that we have pin 9 is our clock pin, and that's connected to the clock input to pin 9 on the to pin 9 on our IC. We also have um, our VCC connected to uh, the clear uh, value of the uh, of the uh, IC, and that's because this this is an active low. So if you have if you set clear the clear input to be low, it'll zero the state of the of uh, the IC. Uh, so you can see the yellow lines are the data lines that run out, and each one of these is running um, to the anode of the eight LEDs. And you can see that we're using common cathode configuration. So you can see on the black line of the uh, of the LEDs, we're running through one single resistor or one, which is 250 ohms, to ensure that we meet the um, uh, 25 milliamp maximum current through the IC. Um, the colors have tried to be consistent, so the orange and green lines are listed as, as shown. Pin 1 is important. Pin 1 is, if you remember the data sheet, there was a NAND gate on the input to pin 1. Now, we need to, we need to have a single input into our, into our gate, into our IC, and you notice the properties of a NAND gate. And you can see that if we tie the inputs together, which I've done in this case with the pink lot wire, which connects pins 1 and 2, you can see that if the input is 0, the output is 1. If the input is 1, the output is 0. So it acts as a simple, simple inverter when the inputs are tied together. And that's the configuration that we need for this particular IC. So on to the flashing problem, or how does this work? Well, the serial to parallel converter, if you look at this animation, you can see that as the clock pulses come in and you can see the yellow dots and the clock pulses you see that the serial input has been loaded into the um, into the uh, circuit it's not a latch circuit so you can see that if you look at the ones and zeros they in effect move left to right across the outputs which gives us the problem we have with our LEDs which is the slight flashing effect that we see on the LEDs so every time we load a value one of the eight values as we move across there we get flashing because we also have to shift eight values across and that gives us this slight pulsing you see on the LEDs that are off uh, on, on our circuit. So that's a problem with this particular circuit and it's one that we're going to try and address with the 74HC595 which is in, indeed a latch circuit. So you can see here in this configuration with the 595 and I'll explain it in a minute you can see that we don't have the flashing. This circuit is quite similar to the circuit for the 74HC164 but you'll notice that there's a, there's a few changes. We're driving the circuit in the same way by, by supplying the VCC and the ground. Uh, but you'll notice that we're using one extra wire from the Arduino. In this case, this is the yellow wire. And the yellow wire in this particular case is going to provide a latch input. And you'll notice already that if you look closely at the LEDs, you'll notice that there isn't the same pulsing of the LEDs that are off. So if you zoom in, if we zoom in on this particular part of the circuit, you'll see the yellow wire is is connected um, you'll notice that there's 16 pins on this IC rather than the 14 that was there before so we've had to make a couple of changes to the code um, that we've written for the the application uh, the clock pin is still pin 9 the data pin is still pin, pin 8 but we've also had to add in this latch pin which is pin 10 and the latch pin is going to be a, it, it's got we're going to be able to enable and transfer the, uh, the values to the outputs using this latch pin. So again we set this uh, as an output pin, the same as the data pin and the clock pin. So we have to change our code slightly and we, we do our loop as before and you'll notice the first uh, for loop is for i is 0, i is less than, so we go around 8 times again and we leave the shift out exactly the same. The difference here is that once we've shifted out the value to the position that we want then we uh, set the latch pin to high. So in that case, that will then transfer the, the, the values to the output. We delay for 125 milliseconds, and then we write low so that we disable the latch, so that we can then safely load the next value without it transferring to the output. 
So that's that's the the uh, and it allows us to transfer the move the LEDs from left to right. Uh, in this case here, we have our second loop, which is from right to left, and in this case, we're loading the high value in and shifting right. So it's the same as before for the seven four one six four. So we compile it and then we upload it to our uh, to our Arduino. So just to look at the data sheet for the 74HC595, uh, we'll see that it's uh, it's uh, the only difference here. You'll see straight away it's an 8-bit shift register with latches, and that's the big difference here with this particular circuit. It has, as I said, 16 pins instead of 14 pins, and you'll see here that the pin description is slightly different. We've got a few different pins. We've got a shift register clock input, shift register clear input, the same as before, but we have this storage register clock input, which is pin 12. You can see it there, or CK. So that's the main difference that we have. And if you look at this block diagram here, you can see that we have our shift registers at the top, but we also have our storage registers below. And when we see this on the logic diagram, you can see that there's a whole different set of, of flip-flops that are being used. So there's twice the number of flip-flops. And in effect, what we're able to do is load in the values into the top array of flip-flops, and then when we apply the RCK pulse, we can then transfer them to the storage register for display. This means that if we look at if we if we look at this again, you'll see that there isn't the same pulsing, and that's because we actually load the value fully before we transfer the values to the to the eventual uh, output. And this means that we don't get the same flashing. So here's the, the way that we've wired this up. Um, the pins have moved around, so QA to QH are are have moved around somewhat. So you just have to be careful with the wiring. We have our ground pin, we've tied all our, our LEDs together to the same ground pin, and we've set G bar to be ground. We've set our SCLR uh, inverted value, which is the same as before almost, to high, which makes sure that we, we, we don't clear the uh, registers. You'll notice that pin 10 is connected to the Arduino, which is the yellow value into our, into our circuit, and that's the only real change. So here's the animation of the, the serial to parallel converter, the 74HC595B. And you'll see that we have this separate RCK pulse at the top. So it's exactly the same as before, but you'll notice on the rising edge of the serial register clock input, you'll notice that when that gets, when that rising edge gets to our, to our IC, you'll see that it then triggers the transfer of the data from the 8-bit shift register into the 8-bit storage register. So assuming in this circuit we had all zeros before, the value that we want to display, in this case uh, 149 in, in binary, you'll see that it stays at zero until the very last, uh, until the full data has been loaded because we've been careful with the timing of our RCK. And again, that's how we, we, we control that through our code to our Arduino, and that's how we ensure that the value is only loaded after it's set to the correct value. And that means that now using the 74HC595, the latch circuit, we can see that this pulsing doesn't appear. Now, it's not particularly bad in the case of LEDs, but if this was a data channel, you would get a lot of noise as you're loading your values into the output. You can also see that, and I suppose this is when it scales up, you can see that using one more wire and only one more wire, the white wire in this case, we can now have eight, 16 LEDs. So I've changed, the, I've changed the code just slightly. You can see we've got our clock pin. And I've called this the high data pin and the low data pin. So in effect, we've got what I would consider to be the, the least significant byte and the most significant byte. And this means that we're now able to control 16 LEDs uh, using only one additional pin than before. So in this case, we've only added in uh, pin 11. Uh, I set those pins to output as before. The only thing I have to change here is just to make sure that I'm only shifting into one set of LEDs at a time. So I've just written this that if I is less than 8, then we're shifting in most significant bits into, into one set of the LEDs. Otherwise, shift out into the high data pin, uh, we're shifting I minus 8 times. So that means that we're treating this as value, so it's, let's say at the highest value, it's 16 minus 8 is 8. So we're treating it as two sets of 8 LEDs. I've cut the delay to half the time, 62. So just to keep it around one second between the cycle going from left to right and right to left. So you can see that using a second 595 IC and only one additional pin, one additional serial data pin, we're using the same um, uh, clock signal and we're using the same uh, serial, uh, the, the same serial clock signal. We're able to then get it 
um, 16 LEDs or 16 individual channels using only two pins on our on our Arduino. 